Good evening, everyone. Hello everyone and welcome to round number seven and eight here at Montreal in Canada and I'm excited to be able to commentate on what will be a fantastic event as always here at this circuit. Lots of challenges available to the drivers in terms of this narrow difficult circuit and it does certainly cause quite a lot of chaos for the drivers with the narrow walls around this 4.36 kilometer circuit 2.7 miles for those who are using their old money now of course around this circuit we've got a drivers who've already set their lap times in the 18 minute qualifying session that we have here and jorty 2003 is currently the man on pole position in the Haas car which is fantastic for him so far Now, I just want to briefly cover the standings at the moment in the top five for both the drivers and, of course, in the constructors as well. So, Italy Toy TA leads the way on 89 points. He had a fantastic pair of races in the Tier 2 lottery at Portimao last week. He had a race victory, pole position for the second round, finished fourth there. He leads on 89 points. But Money Game in the Williams is on his tail on 84 points. Third and fourth are the two Aston Martins of Psycho and Il Checho on 69 and 54 points. And Jorty 2003, who's just been deposed of pole position by the man in that Alpine there of the USA Toy TA. Jorty sits in joint fifth with Spanel on 43 points in the Haas and Alfa Romeo, respectively. Look at the constructors just for the top five. Aston Martin lead the way on 123. They've got a nice gap and a buffer to Alpine on 96. Williams are third on 86 with Alfa Romeo fourth on 63. And then the Haas team in fifth on 56 points. So a lot to play for in this championship. And I'm very, very excited to see how everybody conducts themselves. Like I said, this is a, a circuit that's very old school in terms of its design. It was built in 1978, and it's not really changed too much in that time. There's obviously been some extra safety precautions that the chicanes added, but the real character of the circuit still embodies that of the late, great Gilles Villeneuve, of course. You're to Toy TA in the pits. I'm just watching Jorty coming out of the final corner of the Wall of Champions. What will the Hilt's lap time be? And it's a 1 minute 10.4 from the Haas. That is a considerable gain on the cars around him. He's four and a bit temps clear of those around him. So he'll be very chuffed with that. Just looking at where everybody else is. Il Checho, he's on a lap in third place at the moment. He's up on his second sector time marginally, but can he improve that any further i say first sector i should have been been in the second sector it's another marginal gain so it all come down to how il checho prepares the end of this lap he's got it very nicely done out of the hairpin at turn 10 through 11 through turn 12 which is this little right hander here it's not much of a corner even in the wet but it is still classed as an fi grade corner under the bridge breaks just at the 50 meter marker and il checho abandons that lap he's done there is the steps also on a lap time no he is not so we are just preparing i think the drivers for one last run with the remaining time in the session left there can't be much time left i imagine there's a yellow flag in sector three so fantastically for you and for everybody else who is watching as well that covers up the amount of time remaining so nobody knows how long's left in the session ideally which is a bit of an oversight oh i've just watched roby hc and seventh just spun out of the exit of turn 10 very difficult corner turn 10 to it's very easy for the drivers to be impatient on the throttle and do exactly what roby did just then he gets out of the way recovers quite nicely no damage done he'll apart from a little bit of a bruised ego potentially but he'll roll his way back into the pits but the championship leader is on an out lap. He's building up to what will be another flying lap in this session. He's the only other driver apart from Jorty in the one minute tens. And hopefully our race director is watching. You Italy Toy TA is on board feed because I'm going to run you for the lap of Montreal. So he gets the 
exit nicely done flicks the drs open and barrels his way towards turn number one on the brakes on the right hand side where that little white area is on the ground and then brakes for second gear through turn two nice and patient on the throttle and full commitment once he got to fourth gear again on the approach now flicks through the right left chicane in fourth short shifts into fifth to keep the car stable completely flat through the left right and then at the brakes where that little sort of safety car mark board is for third gear and that is a nice first sector so far from usley toy ta nicely done at the moment he's not up in terms of his lap time in terms of the delta we've not got that feed just yet but he's flicked Whoa, right on the limit <laughs> three turns eight and nine at the chicane there that was fantastic commitment heavy braking into second gear once again for this herpin at turn 10 freezes all of the road he's over the curb a little bit he lost a little bit of traction and this will be so important on the approach to the final two corners of the race of champions in terms of top speed he's approaching 197 miles an hour he'll break for the pit lane because he's abandoned that effort so you italy couldn't find any more time speaking of top drivers who have found time though jay evans great effort from the ferrari up in third place this is the highest i've seen jay evans in quite some time in gather racing oh he's hit the wall as i was praising him he's on a fortunately for him he's not on a lap he is on an out lap he's broke his front wing that'll be back to the pits for the ferrari but that is a really good effort from jay evans i've not seen him that high up as i was saying for quite some time in gavra but that is a really encouraging performance in the one minute tens and he gets across the little escape road shall we call it there through turns eight and nine he'll chat show the steps in the pit lane money game is out on circuit at the moment he looks like he's on a flying lap he's a tenth and a half down in the first sector he needs to find himself four tenths to get on the front row of the grid but he needs to find eight to get to where Jorty is which is looking like an incredible effort thus far nice and committed for money game through the eight nine complex the chicane he's a tenth down still on his best effort actually drops to first gear did money game to make sure that he got the rotation and in fact he's backed out of that lap so money game in hot pursuit of usd toy ta needs to find a little bit more time if he's going to threaten his championship rival will money game go into the pits no he's going to go on to another lap so the williams goes for a second bite on those soft compound tires what can he do with those devori flying out of the world of champions that was commitment and he goes on to a flying lap roby ht I don't think he's on a flying lap, I think he's invalidated, so he's just cruising round at the moment. But this is the, the last phase of qualifying now for those that are new to Gavra Racing. It's an 18 minute qualifying session for the first one, then we have the race, 25% sprint. And then we have a second qualifying session, which is one shot qualifying, meaning the drivers only have one chance to set a competitive lap time. If they make a mistake, game over for them, they'll be starting near the back of the grid and then another 25% race that they have to deal with. But Jossig is on a flying lap, as are a number of drivers out on circuit. One of those is Fake Nutson, who I think just hit the wall through turn five, I think he did that. I think he just clipped the wall on the outside. Jorty's on a lap. Jorty is absolutely flying at the moment he's got a car in front of him though that's a mercedes looks like scatcher who is in front of the the Haas car and scatcher is also on a lap so jorty is going to get forked by this mercedes not going to improve on this lap great effort from devori to go third in the meantime uh, jorty's going to overtake the mercedes but he's yeah he's lost any progress on that lap so he's going to have to try and save a bit of vrs if he can what about his main contenders? You Italy Toy TA, one of those who's currently second on the grid. Overcast conditions here at the Gilles Villeneuve circuit. But you Italy Toy TA is using all of his ERS as much as he can on the approach to the final couple of corners. Through the chicane, clips it quite nicely. Right up. Oh, he's hit the wall. He's out. You Italy Toy took too much curb, and that's game over. Fortunately for him. 
it all comes down to whether anybody else can improve on their lap time. Speaking of, Jay Evans is about to go on to a new flying lap. Jorty is also done. So the top two, they have finished their qualifying laps. Can anybody stop them? Il Checho is improving in the second sector. He's coming now towards the final two corners at 200 miles an hour. Nice and committed, but he takes a bit too much curve. That's a huge wiggle on the exit, and that's all the time he gained lost, and he backs out of that one. Yellow flags all over the circuit. The Steps VRBS, the McLaren, his teammate, is up in third. Can he match that effort from his teammate? It's currently the best qualifying session that we've seen from Devore so far. It'd be a result if he could stay there. But it's his teammate I'm focusing on in sixth place. Clips the curb. That's nicely done from the Steps. That's much better than anybody else I've seen so far. His lap time, though, isn't going to be enough to move him from the third row of the grid. Money game, he is also in the second sector at the present moment. What's his sector time? He's down on it. He's actually almost half a second down. So money game, I don't think he's going to improve. He hasn't got much ERS left. Roby HT, he'll be the next driver to approach the finish line. Gets the car stopped in time for the Wall of Champions. He runs up against it. I don't think this is going to be an improvement for Roby. It won't be. Just looking to see who else is on a flying lap. We've got a couple of drivers barreling towards the final couple of corners. Il Checho is one of those, but he finds himself going into the pit lane. So it's down to Red Bull's Frank Martin, 95. Commits himself. Oh, he's a bit wide. That might just cost him a little bit of time. And he has, and he knows it, and he's backed out of it. So despite... The front two drivers ending qualifying early. Jorty threw in the pits and Uisley crashing out. They are first to second on the grid and it's Jorty 2003 who takes pole position with a fabulous effort. Four tenths faster than anybody else. You see Toy second. Devore and Jay Evans with the best qualifying efforts I've seen from those two this season. Wonderful effort to get on the second row. And look how close it is between second, third and fourth. Less than one hundredth of a second. That is very impressive. Il Checho is fifth in the Aston Martin, going well for the team championship there. For the constructors is Il Checho, obviously his teammate in the Aston Martin for this season is Psycho, who has now moved over to tier one. So it's down to him to represent Aston Martin and keep their advantage in the constructors fight as large as possible. He's not done a bad job there with that. The Steps is sixth with Money Game in seventh, one of the championship protagonists on the fourth row of the grid. Then it's Frank Martin, Roby HT, and Spanel 57 starting out the top 10. Really good to see Spanel in for the first race as well. He's had a couple of problems getting into the lobbies as the Czech driver, but there he is in 10th place. I should say Chechen driver, of course. It's Chechen, not the Czech Republic anymore, for those that don't know. In 11th, it's Jossing in the Red Bull, the second of the two Red Bulls. Then it's Tutti Boy, Sick Boy, the two boys together. Melo Bello in 14th, and the Alpha Tauris on the 14th and 15th places and the grid. Scatch is 16th, and Luffy and Fake Nuts are not setting a lap time due to various impediments. So, that was an intriguing qualifying session for everyone to try and get through lots of drama you see toy crashing out in qualifying that's not a big story but it will give a little bit of incentive for drivers such as il checho and money game and as well as our pole setter Jorty, a little bit of something to think about in terms of maybe putting him under a bit of pressure. Maybe they could force a mistake of him going into the wall. The step saying never check you. Well, check it is then, my friend. I will make sure I get that correct for everybody. But we are seconds away from the next round here at Gavra Racing. Do comment who you think is going to win, of course, if you're in a live chat on Twitch. And let's see how we go. We've got the Haas on the right-hand side, the Alpine on the left. Who's going to make the best start here? It's Gilles Villeneuve, Subkit. 
and the race is live from Montreal. Looks like a really good start for USA Toy TA, and he bogs down as Jorty. He's going to be susceptible to pressure from Devore into turn one, but they give each other racing room. Devore has to stay in third place. A little bit of contact between Devore and the Aston Martin of Il Checho, but they get for it cleanly in the end. Evans has lost the place. He's under pressure from the step, trying to go around the outside, and the steps has lost it. He loses the back end all by himself and he's facing the wrong way, sadly for him. He drops to 18th, but at the moment it's Uizli Toy in the lead. Good start for him, he'll be pleased with that. That's jossing backwards as well. Oh, there's a bit of a disaster. There's a Ferrari round at the back of what is Luffy as well. There's a bit of chaos. No safety car, no warnings or anything. Looks like everyone's relatively through it cleanly. The two Alfa Romeos, the Spanel and Tutti Boy all together there, but at the front they won't know about it that's money game getting past jay evans for fifth place oh and jay evans has lost the back end and broke his front wing oh he's got on the power too early that's going to be into the pit lane for him and i suspect he'll be going onto the hard tires till the end of the race sadly for him look at the pressure though for the race lead Jorty is alongside, he's using all of the power available to him to go past the race leader, he's got the gap, he's on the inside line and he's got the move done and Jorty takes over the lead, that didn't take him long, the using the power of the soft tyre compound early already and he's going to try and pull away from the Alpine that is on the medium tyres, as is Il Checho behind them, Devore in fourth, I haven't seen what's happened to Devore, he's at the wall there as he goes around turn five got squeezed a little bit by money game but that typically lead to him hitting the wall but the top five all very close together i think they're all separated by less than two and a half seconds now that jorty has the lead can he stretch that advantage on that just watching devore nearly lose the back end there but as jay evans picks up a time for oh it's going wrong from bad to worse for jay evans sadly he's hit the wall again but Jorty, as I was saying, on those soft compound tyres, one step softer, of course, than the mediums, a lot more grip available to him at this early stage of the race. Can he make that count and pull away? I'll tell you who is pulling away, though. It's these front two from Il Checho. He can't seem to hang with the pace demonstrated by those two at the front at the moment, but still a long, long way to go. We're only going on to lap three. There's the pit stop strategies there, medium to soft, potentially lasting 11 laps. I know that the soft compound tyre around here does wear very, very quickly. That is a lot of drama already in the opening laps. You can see Money Game there in fourth place, Devore fifth, Frank Martin's in sixth, Roby HT as well in seventh position. Bit of a gap back to Milo Bello, who's had a fantastic start in that Alpha Tower. He qualified a little bit further down than everybody else. He was alongside his teammate JMV Surreal. And he's gone up six places, so really good effort that from the Alpha Tari. Spanel's up one place in ninth. He's got his teammate Tutti Boy right behind him, both on different compound tyres, so they'll have to work together to see if they can strategize and work their way through the field. Oh, and Jay Evans is retired. That's a spinner as well. Jossing's gone round in the second sector. And there is a Ferrari what I would call a mismanagement program because Jay Evans is now in the pits and being held up by his teammate who's just come out of it. So those two Ferrari drivers have sadly already been lapped in the first four laps that we've done so far but it's Jorty who's now out of ERS, rather DRS range and both Ferraris are out of the race so that's game over for them too hopefully they'll come back for the second race and put in a better performance for the Tafosi fans but Jorty leads the way just shy of two seconds clear of you italy toy ta in second place but the alpine does have a penalty and that is something that the drivers were discussing in the pre-race chat about who can survive in terms of making sure that they don't fall foul of track limits and they are very strict around this circuit and you italy has already fallen foul of that and Il Checho, the frustrating thing for you Italy is that the Aston Martin behind him is in DRS. That's going to give the Alpine driver something to think about on the next few laps. He doesn't want to get into a battle with the Aston Martin, otherwise he'll lose more ground to the Haas in front of him in the race lead. Devore still running in fifth place at present on the soft 
tyre. Three drivers on the soft compound tyres in the top ten. That's Jorted, Devori in fifth and Spanel in ninth place. Spanel going for a different strategy to the usual. He tends to take the harder compound and then run the softs at the end. But Spanel always one for trying something tactically a little bit different. But I do fear that Tutty Boy at the moment has the speed to keep up with his with his teammates at the moment. So that's that's good news for the for Tutty Boy. Jossing and Sick Boy down in 15th and 16th. They're going to have to hope for a safety cut. Although having said that about Tutty Boy and praising him, he's got a free second time penalty. So not ideal. Tutty Boy getting it all wrong, actually. Mello, but what's happened to you? It's the TA. The driver in second place, leading the championship. Oh, a little bit of contact between the two Alfa Romeos. Fred Vassal won't be happy with that. It all came about from Uisley Toitier, who's clearly spun out of turn eight and nine. And it's just fallen away from the Alpine. He looked quick, he crashed, I said before. If anyone can put the pressure on him and make him make a mistake, that's exactly what will happen. And Uisley Toy has fallen down into 10th position. That promotes Il Checho and Money Game into the top three positions. Jorty has now got a time penalty, so we're starting to see more of these pick up a little bit. It's three seconds, of course, which is what he has. It's Il Checho behind him in racing gap. That's Devori picking up the same now. Oh, Devori's lost it. He's in the wall. Oh, and Frank Myers done exactly the same thing. It's synchronized spinning on the exit of turn seven. That puts Milo Bello up to fifth. Spanel in sixth. Tutti Boy seventh. He's got Uitley Toy right behind him with DRS available. Of course, three DRS zones available here at Montreal. Two activation points. Look at Tutti Boy trying to go around the outside for the inside of turn 10 at the hairpin. He's got through. Spanel's got to be careful he doesn't lose a spot to Uitley there. Which he doesn't do. And the two Alfa Romeos, they're not thinking about team strategies. These two are fighting hard for position. They want what is best for them at the moment. And that's Spanel going into the pit. So he's had enough of the soft compound tyres. He will probably and most likely go to the mediums. Frank Martin pits as well. I think he's broke his front wing from hitting the wall, as does Devori. Devori, fortunately for him, he's on the soft tyre. He goes to the mediums, but... Devori doesn't change his front wing, so he got away with it, but Frank definitely did break it, and he's on the hard compound now, so he's going to have a difficult race till the end of it on the certainly not optimal strategy. Jorty will be completely unaware of all this. He's trying to extend that gap to Wilchester, which is about three and a half seconds. Money game hanging on to the back of the Aston Martin as best as he can. And it's Roby HT, who's up to fourth place. Started in... Ninth place did Roby, but he's just kept his nose clean. And he sits a, couple, a good few seconds away from the, the leading trio. But I don't think he'll be displeased about where he is at the moment. Melo Bello as well, having a great time. Into the pits comes the race leader, that's Jolty. He gets on to what will be a regulation tyre change to go over to the medium compounds. Milo Bello now moves up to fourth place. <laughs> Started 14th. What a great drive this is from Alpha Tari. Where will Jorty feed out though? This is important. He's out behind Tutti Boy and New Italy Toy. He overtakes the Alpha Romeo for fifth. Jorty really pushing down that pit exit. And he does rejoin out behind New Italy and Tutti Boy. So he's not in the best place in the world. He would have wanted a bit more clear air than that. So he'll have to try and make that position up on circuit now that he's got a fresh set of medium compound tyres on. Wow, what a race we're having so far. It is a, a wonderful effort that we're, we're seeing from the drive. A lot of action already. But there are battles all over the circuit. Money game is really closing in on Il Checho. Look at this. Can he line up the exit from the exit 
of the wall of champions at turn four got drs il checho makes a defensive move he squeezes money game onto the grass he tried to look for a way through the aston martin did not want to give him any opportunity of getting around the outside of him and they stay in formation for the time being This has been a really fascinating fight so far. Scatcher, who got up to ninth place, is now just pitting. So he's going to box onto the medium set of compound tyres. I have to say, Scatcher was doing quite well. Then it was really good to see him in the top 10 for a few moments. But the leading fight at the moment still really tense for the two drivers at the front. Money game looks like he's got a little bit more pace at this moment in time. That is a yellow flag in second two. That is the Alpha Tauri of JMB Surreal who's gone round. Not sure if he has damage. But the leading fight is where it is at at the moment. Money Game is closing that gap down to Will Checho. He tries to go defensive. A little bit of weaving from Will Checho to keep his position. Money Game doesn't get the exit that he really needed. But he's still got DRS. Will Checho doesn't cover the inside line. This is a chance for the Williams got the inside but he'll so just rolls the car nicely into the corner keeps the position money game trying to get on the power early but he cannot do the undercut and he's behind the aston martin for another lap at least roby ht still in third position in front of Milo bello i'm looking down at the fight for fifth place because you see toy ta is just under a second clear of tutty boy and jorty who is stuck up behind that Alfa Romeo. He's got to get a good exit here out of turn seven. He has done ERS and DRS, of course. But that's exactly what Tutty Boy has to the car in front of him. Jorty. I'll have to just be a little bit patient and try again on the next DRS overtaking spot. Car slowed down, he short shifted a little bit early, did Jorty. And Tutty Boy went over the kerb. This is a chance for Jorty to go around the outside at turn 12. And he's through already. Easy enough for the house driver. Now, how hard will the Alpine of Uitley Toy make this for the Haas? Will he try and over defend, try and protect his interest in the championship, or will he? Try and bolt into the pits on the next lap. Try and get an undercut on the cars in front of him. And go onto the soft compound tyre. As Roby HT picks up a time penalty to the delight of Milo Bello behind him. Who doesn't have one yet. So far five drivers have picked up a time penalty. We'll be back keeping your nose clean here. Jorty right up behind the rear wing of that Alpine though. And you Italy feel in the need to go defensive. He keeps that position. Coming on the exit of turn nine. But we know that the main overtaking opportunities where Jorty's overtaken already on the last lap was on the exit of turn 10. Using that alternative gear provision that he uses. It's a little bit different to everybody else around him. He's going to have DRS available to him. This should be pretty straightforward as Il Checho pits. And Jorty. Moves up to fifth position. Gets past the Alpine. You see Toy decides to stay on for another lap. Roby HT in the pits. Il Checho's got the soft tyres on. He's out of the pits now. That puts Money Game into the lead. He's got a 10.2 second lead over Jorty in second place. Thanks to how the pit stops have worked out. So Jorty is your current race leader, net race leader. And it'll come down to whether the drivers who've just pitted for the soft compound tyres, whether they will be able to make any inroads on the cars in front of them. Milo Bello, Il Checho pitted. You see Toy has been overtaken by Tutti Boy for third place. These two still yet to pit, of course, running in third place. But this is a, a strong showing from the Alfa Romeo of Tutti Boy. He's putting his nose right where he wants to be. We're fighting with the guys who are involved in the championship fight at the moment. That's Money Game into the pits. 
but Uitsi Toitie is going to have DRS available to him. He's going to look to the inside line. And it's a fight to get into the pits. And Uitsi Toy gets a five-second penalty for speeding in the pit lane because he was fighting Tussie Boy. And it's just going from bad to worse, sadly, for the Alpine. He's going to have to try and clear that penalty. Money game's going to come out of the pits behind Il Checho. Quite a considerable length as well, actually, it has to be noted. About the fight for what is currently fifth position. Oh, USA Toy T8 comes out behind two soft compound runners just ahead of Spaddle, who is in eighth place currently. So Jorty leads. Tussie Boy is second, but this is fighting a bit of a losing fight for him because he's going to lose out to Il Checho. Softer tyres, ERS, oh, on the grass to overtake Tutty Boy. <clears throat> it's got to be smart, Il Checho. He wants to get DRS for the next straight. Let's see if he has done it. He has indeed. So he'll get a double dose of this on the exits of turn 10 and the exit of turn 14, the World Champions. And I suspect Tutty Boy will come into the pits, and sure enough, he does. Can he get it stopped? He can't. That's another five-second time penalty for speeding in the pit lane. As Il Checho sets the fastest lap of the race of a 112.4, he took a second out of Jorty on that lap. He only needs to get another half a second because of Jorty's time penalty, and he will have the race victory. But he's got to keep it off the walls. Does the Aston Martin. Then it's money game in third. Roby HT's fourth. Milo Bello fifth. Uithley Toyed sixth. Tutty Boy has come out behind his teammate in eighth place. Don't forget he's got a time penalty for Tutty Boy to deal with. The Bory Knight fake cut nuts in in 10th. Frank Martin 11th. The Steps 12th. Then it's JMB Surreal. Scatcher in 14th. Sixth Boy 15th for Jossing. 16th. Those two haven't had much of a race since their earlier pit stop. But he'll check out. Using all of that soft compound tyre. He can to good effect. That's Milo Bello past Roby HT. There's a fight going on at the hairpin for turn 10. Milo Bello, though, gets a great exit. And in front of Roby. And the best thing for him is that he's got DRS as well. Roby won't have it. And that should consolidate the position for Milo to get into fourth, which he does do. Shouldn't make a mistake through the chicane here. And he does it. In fact, there's a great exit. Roby HT was a bit slow. And here's US Lee Toy T8 to go alongside him for turn one on the brakes down the inside in third gear and the Alpine moves up to fifth on his recovery drive so Checho is within the three seconds now of Jorty oh, I haven't said that though this is gap is fluctuating between three seconds and 2.9 2.8 Oh, we'll, I've just noticed Il Checho's got a time penalty. Oh, he just grazes the wall a little bit on the exit of turn 10. That was a bit odd from the Aston Martin. But that time penalty might just save Jorty here for the race victory. You've got to look a little bit further back to where Money Game is. Can he make any impression on the two cars in front of him? Can he get within three seconds? It's not impossible. Three laps to go after this one. And the Williams mount an attack. Maybe get a second win this season. It's not impossible. Milo Bello still in fourth place. He's got Uitsley Toy recovering behind him in fifth and trying to close that gap down as quickly as he can. Roby's in sixth. Tutty Boy gets past his teammate Spaddle for seventh. The rest of the drivers further down are a little bit more spread out at this point. Be concentrating on the fight then for the race lead because Il Checho. He realises the mistake he's made. He's got to get a move on, and the gap is now 2.2. Ilchecho has taken seven tenths out of the Haas car on this lap alone. But he's going to need more of this if he wants to get the race of victory. He's got to do more. Money game also trying to get within DRS if he can, because if he can do that, he might just gain a little bit more time on Jorty down the main straights where the DRS codes are activated. Bring him within three seconds. Currently, he's 3.5 seconds off the race lead, his money game. 
could just pull this out the bag. It's going to be so, so close though. We can burn three seconds worth of time penalties for either Checho and Jorty. A couple of other drivers have got a lot more than that though, I have to say. Usually Toy TA has got five seconds thanks to his speeding in the pit lane and track limits infringement. Well, this is tense now. Two laps to go. We're on the penultimate lap. That is Scatcher, who was spun on the exit of turn 10. There was a brief yellow flag there in sector two. Money Game is trying everything he can to close that gap down. If he can get within DRS, he'll have an opportunity. Tutti Boy picks up another set of time bounces. I fear that Tutti Boy is going to fall out of the top 10 for Alfa Romeo. But Jorty, oh, look how close this gap is. Money game has got within a second of Il Checho. He's not going to be close enough for DRS on this lap, but if he could stay there for the next lap, this could create a grandstand finish. I'm going to watch the timing intervals. As they cross the line, Jorty leads two and a half seconds. Then it's 3.4 to Money Game, who needs four tenths. To the Haas in front, who will be trying everything he can to keep that three-second advantage so he doesn't lose out on the race win. Money Game could sniff an opportunity at a race win here. He's got to keep it clean. Sick Boy picks up a time penalty as we say that. Justy Boy and Roby fighting for sixth place. The exit of turn seven then. Does Money Game have DRS? He doesn't. He fell out of it again. And I fear that the opportunity is just slipping away from the Williams driver. And the momentum pendulum swings towards Jorty. One last throw of the dice from Money Game. He's going to have DRS this time around. He'll get past Il Checho thanks to penalties. I don't think he's going to have enough to get Jorty in the end. So as they swing the way through the final couple of corners, Jorty avoids the wall of champions. He's going to cross the line of the race lead. How close is it going to be between the two behind them? It's going to be exceptionally close, but it will be Jorty who wins it. Money game ends up second. Il Checho in third. We have to wait for a little bit of time because I have to say what a drive this is from Milo Bello. His best result of the season. He taps the wall on exit, but he won't care. It's fourth place from 14th for the Alpha Tauri. Fifth for USD Toy TA. Sixth goes Totty Boy, but then the penalties start activating, so it's Panel who ends up in fifth place. That's what happens when you keep your nose clean in this event. Roby sixth, USD Toy seventh, Devore in eighth, Totty Boy ninth, and Frank Martin, despite having to pit for hard, gets a reward for his efforts to finish tenth. The steps is eleventh, JMB Surreal just crosses the line now in twelfth. Scatcher and Sick Boy were still waiting to cross the line for 13th, 14th. Fake Nutson, I think, retired on circuit. I don't think he had an accident. And then Jossing, who has already been lapped, has seen the checkered flag. But what a win that was for Jorty. By four tenths of a second in the end, the man who got pole position has taken the race win to go alongside it. That was well deserved. It was a composed and measured performance from Jorty and Ian Milo Bello gets the in-game drive of the day and rightfully so, he put in a really good shift. Did the Alpha Tauri, like I say, from 14th to 4th, his best result of the season. But the Hush team will be celebrating. It's Jorty's first win of the season. Second place was Money Game. Ilchecho got fastest lap at the end on a 112.4. He was third place. Miller Bella fourth. Spanel in fifth place. Then Roby ended up sixth thanks to the time penalties. Really good recovery for Spanel. The two Czech drivers in fourth and fifth place. Coming up a lot of positions. And again, showing the importance of track limits and not catching those penalties. They were both clean. They were one of many three drivers in the top ten not to get a, uh, a penalty for time for track limit infringement. So well done to those 
three drivers in the top ten. Don't forget JMB Surreal, who didn't get a penalty either, but he wasn't in the top ten in the end. Sixth for Roby, seventh for USA Toy. He recovered in the end, but what could have been for our previous championship leader, I believe Money Game will now be leading the championship, but the points will be very, very close between the two of them. Vivori in eighth, Tutty Boy ninth, and Frank Martin, the last point scorer in tenth place, by pitting so early after breaking his front wing on lap six. He got the hard tyres on, he made it to the end. That was a, a good recovery for him. Point, double points. Could have been for the two Red Bulls in the end, but Jossing, I think, had a few issues. So it didn't work out like that. I have to say, every single team represented in the top ten, apart from the double point score for Alfa Romeo with Spanel and Tutti Boy both getting in the top 10 for the Italian team. Fred Vasseur will be quite happy with that despite the contact between the two drivers at turn 10 early on in the race. Well, that was really impressive to watch. So we'll just have a little breather for a moment and we'll be back for the second race shortly we'll have the one shot qualifying that will occur to set the grid for race two and then we will move into the once again 25 percent race and see if anyone can make an impact in the follow-up session So if you're watching in the Twitch chat currently, do comment who you think has got the best opportunity to win race two. Always good to have a, a really interactive community. I'm uh, good to see a number of drivers who are commenting already who are in tier one, which will, of course, be happening later on in today. Eight o'clock British Standard Time. You can watch all of the action there around the Montreal circuit, where the drivers will also have a 25% Sprint race, two of them, in fact, today. Which will be very intriguing to see how they get on. Let's have a look at the post-race stream at the moment. Oh, Jay Evans was actually saying that his pedals broke, which is what caused him to go around. That's such a shame. He had such a good qualifying session. And, of course, well done to Jorty for not only getting his first win of the season, but also his first win ever. So... Congratulations to him within the Gavra League. When I say first ever win, I mean within the Gavra League, of course. But everybody readying up. They are all eager to get going for the second round of the evening. A couple of people commenting saying, Jorty for the race win money game. Being another comment as well there. I think that is, that is Night Slash who's saying... That money game should be winning. Night Slash, I hope you're feeling okay for tonight. Night Slash, for those that are watching who are unaware of his name, he's a Tier 1 racer. Got some good points last week around Portimao, finished 7th, did Night Slash. He'll be open for some more of the same in tonight's pair of races. But we are ready to go for round 8 around Montreal Circuit. The Circuit de Gilles Villeneuve. Around a wonderful city here at Montreal. Famous for hosting many different events within North America, in particular the Olympic Games in the 1970s. So it's certainly a city that is well known for competitive action. And we're about to conduct the one-shot qualifying session. Looks a little bit overcast for the second qualifying session so it seems that the drivers have to be contending with a little bit more cooler conditions than what they would normally have to contend with around this circuit usually in june around the around montreal it's a very hot surface a very hot temperature for the track but we have seen some amazing 
Formula One sessions there before. But it's one shot qualifying here at Gava Racing and the drivers are coming over the line now. Let's see how they all get on. Luffy has retired. Not interested in taking part in the session so far. Everyone on the soft compound tyres, of course, you wouldn't go for the medium compound tyre typically in qualifying due to the soft being the quickest compound, you'd lose time. But just looking at the sector times for sector one, it's Money Game who leads the way from Ilchecho, Jorty and Jay Evans. Those are the top four. So Money Game clearly on a good lap so far. He seemed to grow in confidence as the race went on, did the Williams driver. Looks like a man on the mission at the moment. Let's watch the sector times for number two, and he's again clear of everybody else. It's a very good lap, this, actually, from Money Game. It's a little, he's actually neck and neck with Jorty and Il Checho, but he's got, a, would say, a car length ahead of everybody at the moment. This is it, then. The exit of the race of champions is going to be so important to make sure you don't invalidate your lap time. Money game, will he be the one to take pole position? And he is, and it's comfortable in the end. A number of drivers disqualified due to the track limits. I did say that would be a factor. Money game then gets his first pole position of the season of a 110.4. What an effort. And Devore continuing his strong form, ending up second on the grid. He's on the front row. Can he make a good start to get in the lead? You can see Toy TA kept his nose clean. He's third. Really good showing for both McLarens, actually, because the steps has followed up his Czech teammate in fourth. Jay Evans in the end in fifth place. He'll be pleased with that. Hopefully, he's resolved his throttle issues that he's got with his pedals. Roby HT in sixth. Fake Nuts in seventh. Frank Martin in eighth place. Milo Bello in ninth. And Spanel occupying his typical position in the AlphaTauri. He always seems to qualify in and around tenth place as the Czech driver, but he's there. In any case, Jossing 11th, JMB Surreal 12th, Scatcher getting a lap in 13th, but the drivers who were disqualified due to invalidating laps, Ilchecho at the final chicane, Jorty at the final chicane, our pole position and race winner from before. And Ilchecho, first and second in the last race, ladies and gentlemen, are going to be starting way down the field. So watch them coming through. Totty Boy, he was very quick. He's lined up alongside his best boy friend in 16th and 7th. And then Luffy didn't set a lap time. Well, this has the makings of a very fascinating second race. Steps just commentating me and the boys from Czech Republic. Well, there is a strong Czech contingent in the field. I think there's five Czech drivers in the field, if I'm right in saying, which is a fair portion, actually, of, of the whole grid, which is good to see. It's good to see an, a whole wealth of nationalities represented by Gavrit. That's what we want in terms of inclusivity for everyone to be able to take part, no matter where they're from. And that's always important to remember. But here we go, then. The second race of the evening for Tier 2 here at Gavra Racing. Who will be the race winner with a shaking up grid? It's a Williams on the right-hand side and the McLaren on the left. Who will make the best start here at Montreal? And the race is live once again here from Gavra Racing at Canada. And it's an even start, but Devore's got good traction as they go into turn one. And Devore gets himself into the lead. Money game trying to fight around the outside. He can't quite make it, though. He has to slot into second. The steps is also up into third place. A good start from the two McLaren drivers. They're up a couple of places. And that is the predicted pit stop strategy. So medium and hard compound tyres a couple of people are using. Well, that's a really good start for the two McLarens. They have flown through the field. And I have to say that the McLarens on a completely different strategy to the five cars in the top five. What I should mention, really, with that is that Money Game, UT28 and Roby HT are all on the hard tyre compound. So maybe they're going to try and do something a little bit different. Roby HT, though, under pressure from Jay Evans, who's in sixth place at the hairpin. Jay Evans ooh, thought about making a move, but kept it nice and clean. There's Fake Nuts in seventh. Frank. Two Red Bulls, Frank Martin and Jossing, 8th and ninth. It's good to see those two together. Then it's still Checho in 10th place. A good start for the Aston Martin. Tutti Boy is up to 11th. JMB Surreal. Spannell's lost a couple of places. He's 13th and he's on the soft tyres. Jorty could be losing another position here and he's down to 15th. So Jorty not made the progress of Il Checho and Tutti Boy so far. But Devore sets the fastest lap of the race. He has to get a move on now in that McLaren. He's got two steps worth of compound tyre, softer 
Van Money game, so he's got to make it count. Around this circuit, there isn't much differential between the soft and medium tyre in terms of speed. It's roughly eight tenths of a second, but that's hard. That's about a second and a half, so Devori has to start pulling away now. Oh, looks like a bit of shenanigans going on. Milo Bellows in the wall in a really peculiar place, actually. I wonder if he's had contact with somebody. But Milo Bello, the star of race one, is down the field. There's yellow flags all over the circuit. Oh, Devori, the race lead has gone off. He knew he had to push hard. And Devori has lost it on the exit of turns eight and nine. And he'll be kicking himself at that. And that puts money game back into the lead then. Steps in second place. We'll be thinking his teammate has fallen down the order. It's up to him now to represent for McLaren, looking for a first ever race win with Gavra. But you see Toitier is showing some performance. That's the fastest lap of the race there. Devore, I think, broke his front wing. He's in the pits now. Fake Nutson in fourth place. Really good to see Fake Nutson up in the fight so far. Had a couple of podiums to Fake Nutson last season. He's out on track at the moment, helping his team. Speaking of his team, his teammate down in 13th, the race winner from earlier. Il Checho, though, is absolutely carving his way through the field. He's up to 7th place now. He's made the most positions of anybody. He's up 7 from 14th. So the Aston Martin. Currently there. Having a really good display. That's Tutty Boy making a move on Frank Martin, of course. DRS now enabled for the drivers to utilise. They use the drag reduction system down the three allocated areas on circuit, the back straight being one of them. Steps has overtaken Money Game for the race lead with that use of DRS, is what I was saying. Nice move that from the steps. And now can the McLaren driver pull away from Money Game? And can he make those medium tyres last? I'm surprised at so many drivers picking the hard tyres. There could be a glitch in the game. It could be that they've set up on the hards, or maybe they saw Frank Martin's pace from earlier in race one, and he was setting some really competitive lap times was the Red Bull driver earlier. Maybe they've decided to do something a little bit different and use the soft tyres at the end, but we will wait and see. Fake Nutson still running in fourth place, but he's got a time penalty. Roby there in fifth, Jay Evans in sixth place, Ocecho seventh. Ocecho right on the back of the Ferrari, but they're in a bit of a DRS train now behind the Haas of Fake Nutson. Jay Evans looks like he's got some speed, though. He wants to get past the hard soft tyre. Oh, ooh, that is Tutti Boy. He's gone off at turn nine. Don't know if he's broken his front wing or not. I'm just watching the fight for what is currently fourth place. So the drivers have DRS available to them. Jossing now within that train as well, but he doesn't have DRS at the moment. He must have been outside of the activation point. As Jorty gets up to 10th. So it's a slow but surely a recovery drive from Jorty. Waiting to see if Tutty Boy comes into the pits. He doesn't, so he didn't break his front wing when he had that mistake. As Scatcher gets it all wrong through the... Exit at turn 13. No Bellows on the soft tyres. Devori, the race leader, he's on the mediums. He was leading earlier. Now, the mediums could make it to the end of the race, but they are really pushing the, the compound in doing that. And he sets a new fastest lap of the race with Devori, showing the speed that he's capable of. But if everyone were to pit now, he'd only leap up to 10th place. So one point for his efforts. Devori has to get his get his skates on. Look at this though, the fight for first place is really intense. Money game, despite having the harder compound, is really putting steps under pressure. Ilchecho gets past Jay Evans. Almost got past Roby HT then, but didn't quite manage to make that move secure. But the top three really close together at the moment. The steps just can't seem to pull away from money game in Uisley Toy at the moment. Those three are in a world of their own at the moment. Fake Nuts in four and a half seconds back in fourth place, so he won't be contending with them unless there's a, an error. He finds a huge amount of pace in the next couple of laps. 
Oh, Jay Evans and Jossing side by side through turn number three. On the approach to turn three. That was a good, good bit of racecraft between the two of them. Loads of fights happening all over the circuit. The problem for the steps is that, as Devori sets another fastest lap of the race, I've got to say, he's absolutely flying. If I look at the fastest lap so far, which I'm just going to do, that's, he's in a 112.8. The next best driver is his teammate, the steps on a 113.2. So it just shows you how fast Devori is at the moment. But he's not in the lead fight at the moment. Maybe a safety car could change that, but... It's looking quite difficult for that to happen at the moment. Everyone's keeping it nice and nice and together on track. Roby HC and Jay Evans side by side. DRS available for both drivers because of Ilchecho, who's up to fifth place. Ilchecho feeling the need to defend on the approach to the World Champions. Can Jay Evans go round the outside of Roby HT? He can do. He picks up a time penalty in the process, but that was really canny racecraft from the Ferrari. Look at this train of cars behind him, though. Huge train of cars from Il Checcio right the way down to JMB Surreal. That's a <laughs> incredibly a seven car fight for fifth place. And Il Checcio is actually closing the gap to fake nuts. And so from fourth to 11th place, the gap between the lot is five seconds. They're all together on circuit. Less than five seconds. That's fantastic to see. watching the gap between the steps and money game for first place it is very very close the medium cop oh a little bit of contact between was that contact between money game and USC toy I didn't quite have the angle for that I'm just watching the I think there was contact because USC toy is not looking for a move money game is outside the DRS range so they carry on. I think USC Toy had a little bit of a knock the side of the Williams there. So the steps get a little bit of relief and he's on the medium tyre. Can he use that now? He's got away from DRS. It might just be the moment he needs to extend that gap. And he is doing in the first couple of corners. It's notoriously difficult to pull away out of DRS. Yeah, it was absolutely. You Italy Toy TA did hit the back of Money Game. Fake nuts in there in fourth as Devori picks up a time penalty. Is Il Checcio? Oh, there's a yellow flag. That's sick boy. He's retired. He's not hit the wall. He's just had it off. Devori has come out behind Jossic, or rather, Jossic has come out in front of Devori. That gives you an indication of how far behind Devori is, despite setting the fastest laps of the race so far. Fake Nutsen picks up a time penalty. He's lost a few pla What has happened to Fake Nutsen? As he rejoins the circuit. That was very, very odd around here. But he ended up in a really odd place, did the Haas drive. I'm not sure about that one. Didn't catch it, unfortunately. But Il Checcio's recovery drive carries on. He's up to fourth. He's got Jay Evans behind him. He's got Jorty. Despite Jorty having a bit of a slower progress, he's only one spot away from being right behind Il Checcio. So this hasn't been a bad recovery from him either. And it's Roby, then it's Frank Martin, then it's JMB Surreal running in the top ten. The recovery of fake nuts. And I still don't quite understand what happened with him where he was in tenth place. But there we go. Spaddle's 11th on the soft compound tyre. I suspect he'll be coming in at the end of this lap. And then Jossing, the first of the drivers to have pitted, who haven't been impacted by damage or a spin or an accident thus far. So take a collective breather, everyone, because just moving into the next phase of this race, as Jay Evans ooh, almost ran into the back of the Aston Martin, that would have been embarrassing. We will still get DRS, though, so he won't lose too much time. Jorty trying to get into that DRS zone, but he's just struggling at the moment to do so. Roby HT in seventh place on the hard tyres, and that's a pit stop from Italy Toy TA. So he's getting rid of the hard compound tyres. He can run the mediums to the end. But what will he select? There's a front wing change as well, so he dabbed his front wing when he hit the back of money game. 
so he won't get the undercut that's needed. He'll bolt on a set of mediums to the end of this race. So, where will QSC Toys feed out here? He's going to come out. He's going to come out behind Devore, I think. Gets on the throttle. This is going to be very close on exit between U.S. Lee and Devore. devore has got the inside line and U.S. Lee can't get on the throttle quick enough. His tyres are still too cold. So Devore regains a spot, but don't forget U.S. Lee, thanks to that broken front wing, lost, I would say, the equivalent of about five seconds in the pit stop. But a different strategy being played. The mediums can be run to the end. Roby HT is just hanging on for dear life. He's got Frank Martin, JMB Surreal, and Fake Nuts and all behind him in the fight for sixth place. That's the time penalty for the steps. Now that is not ideal. Money game then comes into the pits. So he's trying to respond to that pit stop from Uitly Toy TA, but he should come out in front, and it's a soft compound for money game. So soft compound tire which is the right call in terms of strategy for the Williams. So he gets out. Where does he come out? He's ahead of Jossing and Co. And that's Devore round at the wall of champions. He's not hit it. He's hit the inside wall, actually. And that might be the end of that for any points for the McLaren driver tonight. Speaking of the McLaren driver... The steps leads the way by 8.4 seconds. Started on the mediums, of course, so he can pit onto the soft tyres if he wants to. And it's Ilchecho and Jay Evans for second and third. Jorty's fourth. He's not got a time penalty. That's another penalty for DeVore. It's getting from bad to worse, sadly, for him. Now, I'm watching the pit lane. Will the steps pit for set of soft tyres here? No, he carries on. So the steps feeling another lap is necessary. What about the cars behind? They carry on as well, so no pit stops just yet. Apart from Frank Martin. So Frank Martin is the first driver on the medium tyre. He wasn't running in that front trio to go onto the pit pit strategy. He's got a five second penalty, I think, though. Did he? Did he get that for speeding in the pit lane? I did just have a thing flash up then to say Frank Martin's something or other. He's going to come out, of course, behind you, Italy Toy TA, who's fighting with Jossing and Fake Nuts in for eighth place. Huge scrap going on. Fake Nuts in right at the inside. Dives one through. You Italy to oh, you Italy has a bit of cont Oh, what is Frank done? He's gone off the road on the exit of turn two, where the pit lane feeds out, and he's skated off, and I think he hit the wall. There's a lot of chaos and carnage going on now. Well, well, well. What an absolute palaver that was on the exit of turn two. So, we carry on. The pit stop strategy is working out in a very, very interesting way. So the steps is still going. He's still not pitted. So he's leaving the soft compound tyres until late as possible. The same with Ilchacha, the same with Jay Evans, but Jorty is now in the pits. More time penalties popping up for everybody. Well, this is an important pit stop for Jorty. Where will he come out? There's a huge gaggle of cars who are coming towards the Wall of Champions corner now. Money Game being the lead. Well, Money Game's past that, of course. But Jossing being the leader of all that, I think Jorty is going to get out in front of them. And he does so quite comfortably, and he won't be pressured by the cars behind. So where does this leave everybody in terms of pit stop strategy? Well, the steps is going to come out, in theory, behind Money Game at the moment, but he will have fresher compound tyres to last to the end. That's a Ferrari. That's Jay Evans. Jay Evans has lost it, and has he broken the front wing? I don't think he has, but he's lost the car on the exit of turns eight and nine. That's such a shame. Jay Evans is having a really competitive fight there. He's still in for a chance of points, but it's going to come down to how quickly he can get up to speed on those soft tyres. JMB Surreal fighting with Roby HT for third place and goes into the pit lane as he does it and gets it stopped, importantly, doesn't pick up a time penalty. Il Checho now onto the soft compound tyre. And he 
comes out of the pits. Money game will have already passed him. The battle really for Il Checho is where will he feed out in relation to Jorty? And he comes out alongside the Haas driver, but he's not in front. And Jorty will be smiling at that one. The undercut strategy paying off then. Only take Il Checho a couple of corners really to get the tyres up for temperature, but that will be a fight for position for the remainder of this race. Most drivers have now pitted, apart from the Steps and Roby HT, so they don't feel the need at the moment to pit, although having said that, Roby, when he does inevitably pit, he's going to have to. He will come out outside of the top 10, whereas the Steps is probably going to come out in second place, and he carries on for another lap. The Steps clearly doesn't feel that the medium tyres are going to cause him any problems. He thinks that he can get through to the end. He will have to stop, of course. He can't not pit. He won't have to worry about his teammate in terms of pitting because Devore is on a different part of the circuit to him. And that's a fastest lap of the race of Jorsey getting those soft tyres up to speed. Now that he's had a, an extra lap to put a heat cycle into them. Is the steps going for a strategy that I think could, whether this will work in time is another matter, but is he going for a strategy where Money Game will use the best of his tyres in the opening couple of laps, he's on his fourth lap now, his Money Game on those softs, and when the steps come out he will have completely fresh tyres to the end of the race, and he'll have more tyre performance available to him. He is pushing the ERS, so the steps is certainly, I think, pushing flat out, and I have a feeling he's going to come into the pits here. No! Wow, he doesn't despite that. So, what is the strategy for the steps then? I, I do. I'm sure, the steps knows he has to pit again. I'm sure he's definitely not thinking that he can just carry on fine. What about Roby HT? Does he decide to pit on this lap? No, he carries on as well. So those two deciding to go with a different form of strategy there. Little Chacho really pushing to try and get onto the back of Jorty. He's on DRS, he's not close enough yet. Jossing, that could be a really good overtake from Jossing if he can get alongside Fake Nuts in, which he has done. He's on the inside line for turn number one. Oh, Fake Nuts on the outside, they give each other racing room. Oh, little bit of door door to door contact between the two. Fake Nuts in still on the inside. This is really good racing between the two, I've got to say. Oh, and Jossing goes round and that's a contact. That surely, is that going to be a safety car? I think because it's lap 16, I don't think it will be. No, it won't be. They're just going to go through the yellow flag zone. If that had been a lap earlier, that would have been a full-blown safety car. And Frank Martin. Has let us, I think he's disconnected from the session, but that was all from Jossing and Fake Nuts in battling one another and the steps pits now, so he decides that's the moment for him to go into the pits. I'm sure he might have been hoping for a safety car as well, but that didn't happen. But Fake Nuts and, and Jossing were side by side, looked like there was a bit of squeezing in the end and that just led to Jossing going round and I think Frank Martin had his wing broken and all of that. Il Checho finally comes into the pit lane. The steps has come out in second place, which is where I suspected he would. He will have completely fresh tyres till the end of the race. There's rain on circuit as well, just to throw into all this. We have a wet race in the final two laps. I don't think it's going to be enough to wet the track, but my goodness, do we have a, a fascinating last two laps? The drivers will have to make sure that they don't make any mistakes if it does get heavy enough maybe to impact the surface but after all that Jorty is third behind the steps Il Checho fourth Fake Nutson is fifth JMB Surreal sixth J Evans seventh Spanel is eighth Il Italy Toy TA is ninth and that Roby has got into the top ten and someone who's decided to put on a set of intermediate tyres is Luffy he's got absolutely nothing to lose does the Ferrari but he's decided why not go for it and DRS has been disabled for this final lap. Wow, it is heavy enough. So it's going to be a battle for the drivers to keep it on the circuit. Those that are on the soft compound tyre, now I see why the steps and why 
Roby HT decided to stay out for as long as they did because they thought it might get wet enough. Oh, it's going to be very... I could see the surface, the road surface is a lot darker. There's a couple of lines appearing within the, the corners. Wow, this is fascinating. Here we go then. Couple of incidents already. Luffy's spun round, but I miss the ears on the intermediate. It's probably a bit early for them. Usually Toy TA gets past Spanel for eighth place, but USC does, of course, have a time penalty. Look how gingerly they're going around the corners. Luffy's crashed out. They're so hesitant on the throttle. Only a couple of corners left. Money Game just has to tiptoe through the last two corners here at Montreal. The steps is closing him down, give him credit where it's due, but I don't think it'll be enough. So Money Game, two corners to go. Just needs to tiptoe through this wall of champion section, which he has done. And it will be Money Game who takes two wins in two rounds here at Canada. He won in Portimao, he wins again. The steps will finish in second place. He'll beat Jorty despite the time penalty. Il Jetro crosses the line in fourth, and I think he should be clear enough of those cars behind. Everyone else is just about struggling. It's completely wet now. So Fake Nuts crosses the line in fifth, but it's JMB Surreal who ends up there. Fake Nuts is not sixth because it's Roby who gets sixth, but Spanel and Tutty Boy end up seventh and eighth. Fake nuts in his ninth. USD Toy TA gets the last point. Jay Evans ends up out of the points with Frank Martin. Everyone who's on soft tyres and still has to finish the race, it'll be so difficult for them. Wow. Be so difficult. Look at I'm watching Devore. He's just floating through the final couple of corners. Melo Bello has actually gained a place on Scatcher. Thanks to going on the intermediates, which it is now wet enough for. Wow, what a finish to the race we have. If that rain had come a lap earlier, my goodness, wow, what we could have had in the end. But Money Game, through all of the travails, has taken another race win to complement a podium as well. He will lead the championship. What a round he's had. The American driver has ended up with a great result. A good result as well. Driver of the day for the in-game going to Jorty 2003. Which I'm not too surprised by. Thanks to moving up so many positions in the end from 15th place. So him and Il Checho putting a, a good display on. The Steps gets his first podium of the season in the McLaren. That's a great result for him. I'm sure he'll be very, very happy with that. Then it's Jolty in third, Il Checho in fourth place. JMB Surreal, what a performance from JMB Surreal to get fifth. Alpha Tauri's both scoring points in the end. That was really, really pleasing to see for those two. They've had a difficult start to the season, have JMB Surreal and Milo Bella respectively, but those points will be a good welcome boost in the confidence for them moving forward. Roby HT a six. Spanel and Tutti Boy both Alpha Romeos. Both of them ended up in 7th and 8th place. Fake Nuts in ninth, And USD Toy TA finishing in 10th place. The last of the point scorers. Our championship leader heading into this race did not have a pair of events that he wanted. But there we go. What a really good set of races we had there. And the drivers now will be discussing what their thoughts are in the in the post-race chat of course within the the discord area that we have we will have some interviews as well to conduct which i am looking forward to having a chat with the with the drivers ask them a couple of questions of course i do like to have a natter with them all well those that have joined of course so we'll just give it a couple of moments before we conduct the interviews. Just going to have a look to see the, the chat area. But yeah, what a, what a great set of drives that was across the field. 
Uh, I'm just having a, a quick watch of what is going on now. I've got a little bit of an understanding here of what's happened to Fate Nuts. And I did say there was something odd that had gone on. He then ended up being turfed backwards by a car behind. That's that's unfortunate. I did think it was rather peculiar where he'd ended up on the track when we cut to his feed. Now it seems we have the answer to that. So I'll give it a couple of more moments before we start the interviews. I'm delighted to say we've got a couple of drivers in the chat area with us. In fact, we've got two of them. We have Money Game and we have The Steps, both of whom finished first and second in that race then and consolidating results that they got from earlier, especially with Money Game who had a podium. So Money Game, I'll start off with you then. So if you want to unmute your mic for everybody, that would be great and hopefully you can hear me. But congratulations, another set of pair of races, Money Game, where you've got a race win, got a podium, that's gonna put you in the lead of the championship quite considerably. How was it for you then in those two races? How did you find it around Canada? I can see that Money Game has unmuted his microphone, but I can't hear him, unfortunately. I know a lot of drivers in the chat area are eager to, to hear your thoughts. Absolute silence we've got at the moment, unfortunately, from, from Money Game. Who has... Money Game has actually left the chat area to rejoin, so hopefully that setup change on the Discord will work for him. Money Game, can you hear me? Yeah. Hey, I can hear you now. Fantastic. That seems to have worked what you did. So I was saying, um, race victory for you just then, third place in the in the second race. Canada a good track for you then? Yeah. I find a lot better in like one shot qualifying. It's easy. Yeah, seems seems to be the case. Did you did you feel like that? Did you feel like that those two results were on today? Did you think you could win the race, or were you thinking maybe just try and get another another good set of points? Just try and get another good set of points. Good stuff. Good stuff. So you lead the championship now. You've only got three rounds to go after this one we're at mexico next week then saudi arabia imola do you start thinking about the championship money game or are you thinking try and take each race as it comes definitely championship yeah, yeah. do you think you can win it mm, it'll be <laughs> a hard fight <laughs> but definitely but yeah kind of good stuff good stuff it's always good to have a I have a positive attitude. I'll ask you one last question, Money Game, which is so you can disappear. It's going to be next week, Mexico City, Mexico GP. Is it a track that you like? Yes. All right, then. Happy yes. days. Thanks. Thanks very much for that, Money Game. Well done once again on the, on the race victory and the podium. Well done to you. Thank you. Right, so that was Money Game. We'll move it over then to the Steps VRBS, who got his first podium this season. I hope that the Steps can hear me and he's unmuted his microphone. Uh, it doesn't look like he has just yet. Uh, but for those who are just joining in late, Steps scoring a podium. He looked very rapid during that race. He even led the race as well early on and was putting a few good moves in place. The Steps, though, well done to you. Second place in that second race there. How how was it for you? Uh, yes, hello everyone. And uh, yeah, uh, I think it's a long overdue podium for me, if I say so myself. <laughs> Especially after Portugal. And uh, I sadly didn't, have, didn't experience the podium uh, happiness in Miami, which I finished in second place, but after uh, acclaims were yeah prosecuted but yeah second place happy as i can be yeah absolutely and we, we saw you lead 
the race for the for the first time and I, and I said in the in the in the commentary I was wondering what was going on in terms of you stayed out for quite a long time did you think that the rain was going to come earlier than what it did uh, yes 100% I uh, was counting on it that uh, the rain would come like with like five laps to go but yeah I took a gamble and it didn't work out sadly for me no no it, it didn't in terms of the race win but still a podium for yourself is is just reward for you know what was a really competitive for you and your teammate today in terms of Devori as well do you think that you two have you know after a, after such a good performance today from the pair of you I know that Devori end up having a few problems but do you think there's a chance at the constructors for the two of you you seem to have a good relationship I certainly hope so I mean, if uh, the chemistry is uh, good between us and uh, uh, if we can uh, manage properly our strategy, I think we can easily go for constructors. At least. That's, yeah, good stuff. That's what we like to say. We always like to hear some, some positivity from yourself, Steps. One last question. Uh, Mexico City next week. Uh, a very easy overtaking circuit a lot of opportunities around there is it a track that you're good at do you like it uh mexico city i i look at it the same way as canada it's uh from my point of view it's uh, one of the easier tracks to drive mm. with so little places to make a mistake that uh, it's going to be hard to actually find the extra space, extra inch of corner that I can exploit mm. into more space. But uh, yeah, I'm excited. I like these uh, quote unquote short tracks. And uh, yeah, I'm looking forward, forward to it. Oh, good stuff, the steps. Well, thank you very much uh, for joining me in the commentary box. Really appreciate it. And congratulations again on your second place in the second race there. Thank you once again, and uh, have a great day, everyone. <laughs> thank you. You too, matey. So that is it then for tonight's pair of races here with the Tier 2 League. And what a set of races we had. A lot of drama. We even had rain right at... And I'm certain that in the tier one race that is going to be starting just later on of course at eight o'clock british standard time so an hour and a half time from now you'll be able to have a chance of watching some competitive action and please do make sure you tune in on twitch of course don't forget to follow gava racing on the website that gava of course has you do check that out it's the alta vista version if you're unsure about which link to press and if you're interested in even taking part within the lobbies do register your interest we're always looking for more drivers here at what is a very inclusive and very wonderful community that we have but next week the drivers will be heading over for tier two at mexico as i've already mentioned for rounds nine and ten at the wonderful mexico city circuit who's going to win that one i wonder the championship is now starting to take into effect and the drivers are starting to get themselves ready for a championship push at that race track so from me jack tm53 a commentator as always here at gather racing for tier two please do give us a follow but that's it from me see you in half an hour and a half wherever you might be in the big wide world have a good one see you soon <laughs>